just to give you a bit of an understanding about the dangers of cold water and contamination and while they're there, imagine if this outside tap was connected to this water bill. In this case, it's got horse manure in. So when the, the owner fills it up with a watering can, they water the garden, it gives it a bit more nutrition. So let's say, for example, if there's a fire engine, or if there's a leak in the water main, the water will back siphon, like so. Okay, so it's very dangerous. So just here we've got an AUK2 air gap. This is a capstan head. You can see the, the cross on the head of the tap. And there's 20, 20 mil clearance between the outlet and the spillover level. Again, it's chrome. Turns all the way. That's got a washer inside. To take the head off, you'd simply have to unscrew the head off, take the grub screw out. AUK2 basin. And just as a little bit of advisor here, the waste exit is chrome and this would have to have a slotted waste system in for the overflow system, toilet system and this is a part 4 ball valve British standard 1212 and the part 4 ball valve is equilibrium type and it's one where the mains pressure aids the diaphragm to close off these can only be used in high pressure hello this is my co-star Harry so this is an AUK3 tap Ceramic disc, so there's no actual washer in it, it's just a ceramic disc with two holes in, moves up and down. Um, monoblock tap, so there's one hole in the surface for it to go through. Okay, um, so the drawing for the water eggs training, make it more simple, AUK3. So a sink waste is classed as category 5, so that's why there's a larger air gap there. So this is a joint spout, so theoretically speaking this should actually have um, a single check valve on the services so it will prevent cross flow because obviously if it's mains pressure and low pressure hot the mains water will actually go up the hot supply um, so you would have a single check valve which is it EA, EB but that does have an advantage you could actually, if you've got a hot water airlock take the nozzle off, put your hand over the end turn the supply on and force the airlock through just here we have a filling loop going to a combination boiler. You can see the spherical valve there and the dual check valve there. What's wrong about this installation is it's permanently connected. That loop should actually be removed, prevent overpressurization of the system, and more importantly, to prevent contamination. Whenever you come across situations like this, always explain your knowledge to the customer. And also, if you explain to the customer, you'll prevent them from having to call you out. So a few more pointers now. Just here you have speed fit on the cover pipe. There's no real contamination issue there, but what the true issue is, is breaking the earth. So thinly speaking, you should have two earth clamps and continuity there, just like it was a water meter. This is supposed to represent a combination boiler filling loop. So you've got the isolation valve, which is correct. You've got a double check valve, which is correct. But what is wrong is it's permanently, permanently connected. That should actually be a disconnectable hose with two caps. So there's no way they could contaminate each other. Because obviously if the heating system is going to have an inhibitor in it, black sludgy water, you don't want that contaminating back onto the cold water main. This is quite good how it's installed hanging down, because obviously all hoses, whether it be a shower hose, a cooker hose or a washing machine hose, it's always good for the hoses to hang down, less stress. This installation is illegal because it's a mixer tap with a shower attachment. So obviously if Shrek here was having a shower, you know, or doing his hair, the shower head was to fall in the bath, and the fire engine, the leak happened in the street mains, back siphonage. So just to overcome this problem, there's, there's various ways you could do it. Fit a retaining chain on a rail so it won't reach the, the spillover level. Or you could fit some form of HA screw-on device. So this, this device has a check valve in it. So the moment there's back siphonage there, the device will step in. And that's a HA. Get it? <laughs> HA. So this is a plastic WC system. And it's got a part 3 diaphragm plastic ball valve in it, which is correct. 
But what is an ego is that someone's put a, a piece of copper tube on the nozzle for, uh, to access a silencer. This is illegal because this is a rigid tube silencer, which is a massive backflow problem. So that is actually an illegal insulation. Down here we have a part one ball valve, the piston type. This is a, this is a slight hazard because of the lower air gap. Another issue is if you look in the system, someone's fitted a drain off valve. Now the drain off valve is fitted in a damp contaminated area. So if this drain off valve was to leak, it would contaminate up into the water supply. This pipe has been capped off on a water pipe to prevent contamination in Legionella. The distance on the dead end should be cut off within two times the diameter. So this is 15mm pipe, so that should be cut off within 30mm. And all water supply should be transferred. Well, we're coming to the end of the session now. I think it's fine that we just finish off with a bit of a recap. Get you ready for your next exam or your water edge course, okay? So, to one side, thank you, Harry. So let's make this short and sweet. RBZ valve, BA device, reduced pressure zone. So this is in uh, virus sprinklers, where they've got additives involved. So you've got your tongue dish, your line strainer, which is the mesh to prevent dirt going through, your isolation valves, both sides, your three sampling points, to just to check the jumpers are shutting off, Nothing's okay. These must be fitted horizontal. Just to prevent dirt getting on the, the washers. A, B, weir system. So remember air gaps we begin with A. So this system has a large overflow line. So there's no chance possible of the water touching the float operated valve. This next one is a B-Day and it's got the hose touching the toilet pan, the supply. So this is basically saying that the B-Day must have its own water supply. In this situation, this ascending spree uh, B-Day or with the hose is Cat 5. Horse trough, type AB. This AA air gap type is a horse trough again, but the AA type is the one where the air gap is actually the environment. So you get the spillover level there, and the whole area, and the edge of the appliance is actually the overflow. Colour coding. Wholesome water is blue, firefighting is red, reclaimed water is black. DC valve, that's a pipe interrupter, usually has to be 150mm away from any contaminated areas or 300 DB pipe interrupter, they've got the atmospheric holes inside. Pressure reducing valve, so this has got a gauge on. These are activated by a spring inside and you can usually adjust these with a screw, slotted screwdriver at the top. These are good for invented systems because they equal lines both pressures. Flow limiting valve. So the idea is you turn the valve off here, you, you unscrew this green section here, you put a filter in and it reduces the flow rate and the water usage. Flow limiting valve. Cartridge, isolation point, single check valve, so when you do turn it off you don't get loads of bad flow of water. Flow limiting valve, very good for saving water consumption. AUK2, basin air gap, 20mm. AUK3, for a sink. Well I hope you enjoyed that, subscribe, any questions, any problems, enrol. I'm an engineer, 
for 20 years, been a good lecturer for about 10 years now. Any problems, subscribe. Keep watching, keep revising. Thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. Harry, say goodbye. Bye.